Hi friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm Katie and I'm excited to talk to you about essentially my planner lineup for 2022. So I know I'm a little late on this, but things got crazy at the end of the year and it's exciting still here in January. So these are actually my planners from 2021. This is what I'm using in 2022. And I just thought I would talk a little bit about it because I think that choosing a planner is about learning a lot about yourself. And so this was my first year doing decorative planning back in 2021 in January. And this is the planner I picked out and well, not even picked out that I made for myself. Um, and I learned a lot about what I like and did not like, which I then took forward into the second half of the year and I will be taking forward into 2022. So I just want to get into this really briefly. This is impossible to get on camera all at the same time. Um, this is a letter layout, but done horizontally. And I liked this because I was worried about writing in one and a half inch square boxes. But this is just so unwieldy to have it out on my desk like this took up an enormous amount of space and it just, it, it didn't work for me. I did it for six months and, you know, I managed, but it wasn't the right thing. And then also you can see that like in the middle, I had originally punched it for rings and I hated that because especially when it's this wide, I needed to be able to fold it. So that is really what I learned about myself from this planner in the first half of the year. What I learned about myself in the second half of the year, which this is the Happy Planner Classic, is that I love discs. I love being able to take them in and out. Um, and I love changing layouts. So here is one, this was the same one actually, but here's your normal vertical, here's a dashboard. I like to change layouts almost every week and knowing that about myself is an important thing when considering what my new planner is. Other thing I learned about myself is that the classic is more space than I need. I like being able to do spreads like this where I can use like one whole big scene and really emphasize it and have most of my stuff on one page um, or like including a lot of decor if I don't do that. So yeah, here's another one. Uh, there's a full flip. There's a flip through for the summer. There are two flip throughs for this and I will link them uh, actually below um, because there's one for the summer and one for the fall. But you can see there's a lot of room to play and I really liked that. But I also felt like I needed a lot of content to fill each week. And like I felt self-conscious when I didn't have enough stuff in it. And so because of that, I'm going down a size. So this is a Happy Planner Classic, and this is B6 wide. And to compare the page sizes here, here's, here's what we're talking about. So it's a significant decrease in size, and I'm kind of worried about it, but I did my first weekly spread. I'll post a link to that because um, I did do a plan with me in it, and it went really well. So my nerves have calmed significantly. But what I'm carrying forward that I've learned is that I love, find the blank one. Well, here's the, here's the spread I just did. I love the one and a half inch boxes. I'm really used to them now and I can't do anything smaller, which means that I was not excited about doing a happy planner mini. What is so nice about the B6 wide compared to the Happy Planner Mini is that it's, I don't know, maybe only a half an inch. Don't quote me on this right now, but it's like a half an inch wider. Just a little bit. It's the same height. It works with my punch perfectly, but it's like a half an inch wider. And that is the difference between being able to get three full 
classic size boxes across. Here you can kind of see it. As opposed to the Happy Planner where you can only get two and then you have some like weird space. And so in the Happy Planner Mini, they actually just print everything narrower. And like I cannot go narrower than one and a half. That's what I'm used to. That's what all my stickers are for. I don't want to. I don't like to write my like tasks on multiple lines if I can help it. And so like that's just not the right thing for me. So that is why I chose the B6 wide sizing. This planner cover is from Planners Anonymous. This particular one is sold out, but they sell other ones in this size that are just as gorgeous. I'll put a link below. The other thing I learned about myself was that if I'm changing layouts every week, it's silly of me to print out a lot of them ahead of time or to buy them pre-made. It's just not what works for me. Um, I understand it's a lot more work to do this every week, but this is my hobby time. This is how I enjoy spending my time. I'm a designer at heart. And so this is a thing I really enjoy. So this is my January um, divider, which I made out of scrapbook paper, but I really only have this one spread and then a random page that I like misprinted and stuck in here. So I'm not printing out ahead of time. And that's really a little nerve wracking. It means that my discs are pretty floppy here too. But I think it's the right thing for me. Like I was constantly taping pages together and Franken planning. And this planner is only, this one that I showed you, is only six months. And it's the depth of a whole year planner kind of um, in terms of pages because I'm constantly taping them together changing my mind um, and so I didn't want to have to do that so I didn't print them out ahead of time and I'll always have maybe one or two uh, spares like undated so that I if I need to can just do something up real quick but as I said, this process is about knowing yourself and I know myself and that's not what I want. So I'm really excited. Part of that feeds into, I don't know if you saw, I'm also, so part of the problem with printing new pages every week, right, is that if I've already decorated this, I don't want to put this back through my printer, but I don't know what layout I want next. So I separately am including on the front page this, this is from the HB90 uh, planner. I'll put a link below and I'm going to talk about them more soon, but she has in her planner every week a list of the things you want to do and how long you think they will take and then how long they actually take. I haven't done this yet, but I'm excited about it. But it means that I can print this on this side and then at the end of every week, there's a weekly reflection. And um, I might change what the content of this is a little bit, but it means that I can print both sides of this piece of paper at one time and it's done. And next week, I can print them again. As I said, this is a random extra one. Um, but I don't ever have to worry about trying to get printing on double pages that I've already used. And that I think is going to work really well for me. And I think that there are real advantages to me for also planning ahead like this and reflecting afterwards. So I'm really excited about that. We'll come back and talk about the layout in a little bit. I'm going to maybe move to my computer and I can show you all the different layouts that I've come up with because as you know, as I've told you, um, I like to change layouts and I wasn't ready to commit to a B6 wide until I knew that I had like a whole stable of layouts I was excited to use and that would work for me. I needed to have that known before I could commit to going to the B6 size. If we go to the beginning, I haven't finished this planner yet. Like, let's be honest, it's a project and also it's one that I enjoy and I don't want to rush through. So I haven't decorated any of these pockets. 
This is a traveler's notebook that I printed that I had in my old planner and I've just slipped it in there. But like my planner needs a cover and it only has two dividers. Um, so it's still very much work in progress. But I wanted to talk today more about the functionality. Um, we can talk some about the prettiness too, but this is more about like figuring out what works for you. So this is a page I made. It's just got all 12 months on it and a couple lines. This is a place for that future planning. For the most part, I don't do a ton of future planning, nor do I use my planner to, like, I don't take my planner with me to the doctor, for example. And I put all of that kind of information in my Google Calendar, but I think it's helpful to know when they are because I don't have March printed out yet. So I know that on March 15th, I have a dentist appointment and I can just mark that here. This isn't like where I'm going to remember that I have a dentist appointment. Honestly, Google Calendar will remind me of that. And when I get to the week of March 15th, I will put it in my weekly calendar. This is more for like in February when I'm thinking, man, I haven't been to the dentist in a while. Do I have an appointment coming up? Like, when is it? Is it very soon? Should I be thinking about it? I will have it here. So that's how I'm using this page. It's pretty sparse, but like it fits everything that I need in there. This one is something new I'm trying. This is what I'm calling my happy adulting page. And this is like a whole weird thing where I'm tracking a whole bunch of different stuff and giving myself kind of a score for the day. And they are things that emphasize both being a mature adult who gets like some cleaning work done, but also a person who is happy and who does the things who that like inspire and rejuvenate me. And so those are combined. They're both important. They're both the thing I really want to emphasize in 2022. And so this is my happy adulting chart. And this is a whole year um, every month. And so I this is actually being tracked from like a numerical standpoint in a um, in a Google Sheets where I've assigned points to things and whatever. So this isn't so much for tracking as like kind of year and pixel kind of situation where I can just look at the colors and see how I'm doing and um, kind of motivate me, myself to keep going, something to decorate, but really to use these uh, dotting markers. These are little Polaroid pages and they are from the Planners Anonymous Lux inserts. I used mine last year to write when we get takeout and what we got and how we felt about it because we did a lot of takeout in 2021 in the hopes of supporting the local restaurants in our town and but it was hard to remember a what we got and b if we liked it and so that's what i use this for um i printed out two pages of those which is more than i need i think but uh there was a misprint this is another scrapbook paper that i made as a divider and you'll see this one has a tab at the top. This is for Q1. So as I've mentioned, I'm incorporating some of the HB90 planner into my setup. This is very Franken planner, very custom. Um, she has a goal setting system that really emphasizes um, breaking things down into quarters, figuring out your time, figuring out specific um, goals and milestones that you want to make in that amount of time and it's just really good. It, as I said, I'll put a link in the description. She sells it in, um, it comes in letter sized and A5 or half letter size. This, to get it to B6, I had to, to print it at 85% and that was a little bit of a challenge. I don't know that I exactly recommend trying to do that, but if you're tech savvy, great. If not, consider the A5 size. It's only a little bigger than this, and it's really nice, or half letter if you're in the US, and then all you have to do is make one cut down the middle, uh, which is really nice. So I've included all of this in my B6, and that's a whole quarter. This is planning for, honestly, for Q1, it's both for the quarter and kind of for the year and a little bit for my life. So this is a hefty stack. Um, 
but I worked through all of this and that's what then gets me ready for January so I will have probably then three months of planning I haven't decided maybe I'll do all four quarters here at the beginning separated by vertical tabs and then all 12 months behind that's probably what I'll do so I'll have these different vertical tabs to get me through the different quarters and then the horizontal tabs which you can see I have not yet labeled um, for my months and so that's my plan going forward I don't have a monthly yet I could really use one but I never used it in my old planner. All of them just got ignored all of the time. So I need to think critically about what might I actually use. The HB90 system does have a spot for like, because you plan for the quarter, there's a spot for milestones that you want to have achieved by each month. And it might be nice to have like that re written here in January and maybe some other important dates. I just have to think about what I would use. And to a certain extent, I'm trying not to put something in here until I'm ready for it because I want it to be done with intention and to know that it's what I want and then to be willing to change it in February if whatever I come up with doesn't work for me. So anyway, it's a little sparse, but it will absolutely fill out and I'm really, really excited about it. I think I'll move you over now to my computer and we can talk about the layouts that I have for this B6 and why I thought about them the way I did. So not a how to technically on how to design them, but a how to think about designing them, what things were important to me, why did I choose? To design them the way that I did because I think that might be helpful so if you are interested in that keep watching and we will move to my computer okay here we are on my computer and this is just a PDF I've made of all the different layouts that I'm using although let's be honest I'm going to change and rearrange them during the year this video is about knowing yourself I know that about myself but this is the layout that I showed you that I used last this week. Um, and although you might notice that I've changed some things. So this is meant to be really modular. And so in the one you saw, this double box had moved over here. And so because everything is sized in similar ways, I can rearrange these based on how I feel for any particular week, and I'm really excited about that. So if we're talking about how I designed this, these daily boxes are Happy Planner classic size boxes, one and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall. The goal of this planner is to use what I already have, and so I didn't want to make anything that was going to make the stuff I already had obsolete. So these are Happy Planner boxes which is perfect. Love them. Got a lot of them. But the nice thing about Happy Planner boxes is that Erin Condren boxes are the same width. They're just shorter. So obviously those would also fit in here. This is a double box. And so I have Happy Planner double boxes. It's the same height. Um, and uh, if I use an Erin Condren sized double box, I'll just need to put a washi or something I have about a half an inch that I need to cover here. This here, Create box, is an Erin Condren sized box, and I have lots of those too, so I can just stick that sticker right down there. It's sized to fit. Perfect. This one here, right um, where the days of the week are, is actually also Erin Condren sized, so if I have an Erin Condren sized um, sticker, full box sticker, I can just put that and it goes up to this line right here and it looks like seamless in that. So these are the perks of designing things yourself. You can put thoughts into all the little details that might matter to you, which is really exciting. This section here is just kind of a free space. I could have made these taller. You'll see a version of this where that's true, but this is one inch tall and actually it fits a fair number of stickers. It's double box width. It also fits some washi strips um, that like Let's Planet um, has 
or um, I've actually found quite a number of stickers that fit really nicely here, like kind of ornate kind of header stickers or ornate weekend banners. Obviously, this isn't a weekend, but um, that kind of thing fits really nicely here. Uh, I also put a dot grid in. I don't know if you can see it, but that just helps line things up. In some weeks of this, where if I'm not using it as decor, my goal is to put like a project of the week here, something that I'm really trying to emphasize and make sure I do. I think I would probably letter it all pretty to uh, motivate me, but um, that is what I intend here. This is another Happy Planner classic sized box um, full of habits, which I used to track this many habits. Now you saw that I actually have like an Excel sheet where I'm tracking all that stuff. So I can still put a couple habit trackers in here if I want and then like a full box sticker or like an Erin Condren size full box sticker or some other kind of decor. It's easy to cover up or if I decide I really don't like it in the future, I can just take these boxes out and they're gone. This can be just decor space. This little box here is for meals. This, these are again the one inch tall that this one over here is. I only cook twice a week, we eat a lot of leftovers, we kind of bulk cook. So this is just a place to write those two meals for the week. If you did something differently, obviously you could put like the meal plan here. I use this to schedule my Instagram posts. And then here again, this can be decor in all of the same ways that this box here was, but I thought it might be fun to have like a little currently spot too if I wanted to letter those things. And then I guess I didn't mention this place, this is for gratitude, I won't include it every week, but I kind of enjoy including it some of the time. So lots of these boxes are kind of swing spaces that I can use them if I want to for what I've designated them for, but they're really easy to cover up with something beautiful if I want that. So I'm really, really proud of this layout. I'm thinking of adding it to my shop. I'll put a link below in my to my shop if you want it. I'm a little afraid that this one is like way too specific for other people. So maybe I'd remove some of the headers and maybe the habit tracker box, or maybe make two versions. The reason I haven't uploaded it yet is that like I don't know how applicable it is to other people, but I really, really love this layout and I think it's a lot of fun to play with. So if other people find it fun, like I wanna provide it to them, but uh, not if they find it kind of like needlessly prescriptive. The other fun thing I didn't mention about these being Happy Planner classic size boxes is that if you do an Erin Condren sized um, box inside, there's like room here for like a date header. Um, and so that works really well too. That's what I did in my, um, well, I did use date covers in my plan with me for this week. This is just something more basic. If I want something that's just a plain vertical, this will work, it's one and a half inches wide. I only have half the space for Saturday and Sunday, but that's fine for me. This gives me options. And as I said, I was only going to move into this size if I knew I had options. And so I'm glad to have this one. Speaking of options, in my classic planner, you saw that I had lots of times where I printed like a full scene and I wasn't going to move into this planner if I couldn't still do that on the days I wanted to. So this is a week on one page spread where I do have a whole other page that I can just use scrapbook paper for, or maybe put like some small boxes if I still wanted to have gratitude somewhere. Um, but I could just make a, like a beautiful scene here and just be fine with it. All of these boxes are Erin Condren full box sized. So I haven't lost a ton, I might not want to cover them with date covers, you know, like that could be slightly a problem, but not really. Um, probably I wouldn't leave this as both create slash gratitude. This is just me playing, but I think I could put either thing I wanted here. Um, and then here's my daily here and my habits if I want them here. Otherwise I can um, cover this up with some washi strips. I don't know off the top of my head what size this is. I don't think I picked this based on a specific size, but I honestly can't remember anymore. But I'm sure it's easy to cover. This is the same thing, but just flipped, because sometimes that's, I actually prefer to, to write on the right side. My planner sits next to me on my left. So 
that works for me and then I don't run into the discs. This is very similar to that first one. They're just rearranged and stacked differently. So all the same components, all the same sizes I talked about, but just rearranged. I think this is kind of a cool look, kind of a V. I haven't ever used this one yet, but like, I'm glad to know I have it. So um, that's really fun. Here's one where I have a combined weekend. All of these are a little wider and a little taller. This I actually made separately for something else and I'm repurposing now. Uh, you saw a version of this for my HP Classic because that's what I like to use when, um, maybe they're not wider. I think they're still one and a half. I think they're still one and a half. They're just um, taller. And then a whole page available to me here. This is very similar but I can split Saturday and Sunday and then I have room for next week and this week and a double box although I think it's too tall I've got options We're moving through these more quickly they weren't quite as like carefully designed uh, this is just a rearrangement of that one so anyway I hope you found that interesting I'm really excited to live in this layout or versions of it I can always make this go all the way from top to bottom if I want. If I don't want this sticker, I can always rearrange all of the boxes. It's totally modular, which I love, and that works really well for me and for someone who likes to rearrange. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and we'll, I'll kick you back to the physical space now. All right, friends, thank you so much for going through this planner lineup. I mean, it's not really a lineup. There's only one planner, but there's a bunch of different things incorporated into it. So I hope you found this interesting and helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't for more content from me. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, friends.